Thank you. So it's my task to keep you awake after lunch. We'll give it a try. Um, uh, I was asked to mainly address uh, the built environment and retrofitting, so I will start with that and then show you um, what we really should do. Oh, here is the... <laughs> uh, go forward. Yes. Uh, this is a project in 2011. Um, I initiated with the Social Housing Corporation to re retrofit 150 houses to near zero energy. Zero energy, near zero energy, um, and to do it fast. So we started doing that uh, like a renovation train. Uh, we went along the houses. Each day we moved up one house, uh, uh, first uh, dismantling the old facade and roof, and then building up it again. Uh, in 10 days it was done, and then this was the result. And these were you know, 150 houses in 160 days retrofitted to near zero energy. So that started a discussion in the Netherlands. Um, um, so if we can do it in 10 days per house, that was, uh, can we do it in, oh, here's my screen. Can we uh, 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 do it also in three or two days or in one day? And can we bring the cost down? The performance, of course, should be guaranteed. Uh, 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 the, the problem was there were too many workers in the houses because we did the retrofits while the house stayed inhabited, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, a, a paradigm shift in functioning of the retrofit market. Um, many initiatives were taken. One was called Stromversnelling, River Rapid, um, to organize the building sector um, in uh, developing more of these concepts. And it was quite successful. We did a lot of houses, prototyping, and later uh, more series. And these are all zero energy. Uh, retrofitted in uh, one day with prefab panels, prefab roofs. Uh, here you see an example of such a house when it's open. Uh, uh, first, the old facade is taken off. In this case, uh, sometimes the old facade remains. In this case, it was taken off. And you see still uh, 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 the bedroom on, on the left there. Um, is open, so and at five o'clock, you know, the new panels are in and, and people are happy again. Um, here you see one picture of such a house, and I have a short video about this. Simon, I should say, can you start the video? And this is uh, one of the concepts we apply uh, by Volker Wessels. Um, here you see the prefab panels getting shipped. That's, uh, the measuring is done by a, uh, uh, point clouds before, of course, to make the panels exactly uh, on size. Here you see how they uh, start preparing for the anchors, for the new elements. And then the panels leave the factory. They arrive uh, 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 early in the morning, so it's still dark. This is the, that was the column with all the new installation equipment. You see they lift out the panels in front of the facade, and then it's placed precisely on the anchors. And then all the other elements follow. Here is the new installation equipment, which is placed outside the house, not inside, to avoid workers going in. And they all only need to make the connections. And this is, of course, the facade gets a bit thicker, so here they finish the window frames. The roof is getting up. So you see, the old roof is still there, except for the uh, tiles. And uh, it's a shame, it's a steel roof. It shouldn't be done like that. I mean, we could avoid using steel here and uh, using less uh, uh, resources with less impact, but okay, uh, it's different types. And then this, this was a, a corner house, so they, uh, this is a bit more difficult to, of course, insulate the, the big facade on the corner as well. And you, you see, 
Nowadays they do it only, uh, 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 they do it without scaffolding. So this is still some scaffolding, but this house gets an extra attention, uh, extension. Um, so it's becoming a bit bigger. That's an extra, it's not necessary, but it's an extra. Then last panels go up. And then the white column is the installation tower with heat pumps and uh, uh, warm water heating and ventilation unit. And then it's ready, yes. Simon, you can continue. Next slide. Hi. So, yes, what we have to do, of course, it's still too expensive. Well, what's expensive, you know, if we have a climate crisis, but anyway, um, they, want, they want to have it uh, more cheap. Um, so that's what we are doing now, and we've done hundreds of these houses, and it's still progressing. Um, and indeed, of course, whatever retrofit concept you choose, the result is good so far. Um, all these houses are zero energy, uh, and the energy demand is reduced drastically as well. Um, um, and the energy payback the, the, uh, is within five or ten years, you know, for all the investments you made in energy in, in retrofitting the building. Um, and, and you might even, uh, in the, over the longer time, earn some money from it. But um, the point is, don't try this at home. And I will explain you why. Because, you know, on the, house of a, uh, on the scale of a one house, it's perfect. But if you create a zero energy house, you know, the energy uh, is not a problem anymore. What you do is you bring in a lot of materials to generate energy and to reduce demand. Uh, so, in fact, it has become a materials problem. The energy is not a problem anymore. It's, it's, it's free. It's solar energy. The, a solar panel is materials that accidentally produce some energy as well. Um, so, what we did, we investigated four houses, um, older houses, uh, 60s, and we said, okay, what if we do, don't do anything, just provide the energy by a lot of PV panels? What, in case B, um, uh, happens if we just insulate the cavity wall and bring in double glass and then uh, a, a limited amount of PV panels? What if we do one layer of outside insulation in KC? And what if we do a passive style renovation in case D? You know, like we saw complete prefabricated new roofs. Thing. And then we said, okay, let, we look at the energy investments there. And of course, they're all for zero energy. So operational energy is not an issue anymore. It's only about embodied energy. And then we see that the, the uh, option B with the cavity wall and, and the double glazing only uh, has the best performance from uh, an energy impact point of view. It has the lowest overall impact. Uh, what we do is we try to uh, 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 insulate houses to level D, but from energy point of view, that's not the best option. You know? the, so you always have to evaluate more options to see where the best solution lies. For you. So it's not by the definition that extreme reduction is the best strategy. Uh, uh, passive house is not also by definition the best strategy. You need more concept calculations. Uh, it's about net zero CO2, which includes the materials. Um, a second observation is that we have a emergency, as already was years ago published scientifically in the paper by Hansen and, and, and colleagues, um, which was very special at the time. Um, so we developed a building's carbon budget panel, which produced a report, and we looked at how much carbon budget do we have, um, and what is available for the building sector, and what can we do with that budget. Uh, and as you know, um, there is, uh, the IPCC showed that there is a, a maximum budget that we can emit. Um, uh, for a large part has already been used up in the past 100 years, and the remaining quota is about 800 gigatons. Now, if we share that budget equally over the world, then the Netherlands has about uh, half a ton, gigaton of uh, um, uh, CO2 equivalents in the one and a half degree scenario and two gigatons in the two degree scenario, 
well, built environment is about 40% of emissions and the housing sector uh, about 20% of that. So that gives us 0.1 gigaton of CO2 emissions for the housing sector in the one and a half scenario and 0.4 in the two, uh, uh, two degree scenario. Now, what if we would retrofit all the houses in the Netherlands, as we have seen in the small video, and we add up the materials impact from that uh, uh, retrofit, seven, which is seven billion houses in the Netherlands. If we add that up, we get to 0.18 gigaton CO2 in materials investment. And under the one and a half degrees, we have only 0.1. It's not the solution. We, we can't afford to uh, retrofit all houses to zero energy in the complete makeover concept. It's impossible uh, if we take our CO2 budget serious. You always have to make the CO2 calculations. Um, so that's not an option. And even you know, if we would, in this case, retrofit 100,000 houses a year, which is already more than the construction industry can handle, uh, then you will see that, you know, uh, uh, of course, these houses become zero energy, but 99% after one year is still emitting the normal amount of CO2. And, and you see that after 11 years or 12 years, we crossed the maximum budget already. Not because we are retrofitting, because, but because there is a large amount of non-retrofitted houses still there. And if we do this by 6% uh, of the stock um, each year, 450 houses, uh, then we could maybe stay within the two degree budget, but ne not uh, uh, within the half, one and a half budget. So we have to find other ways. We can't afford to bring all houses to zero energy in the uh, maximum makeover concept. We can bring them to zero energy. You just switch off any, everything, of course, but, but not by investing a lot of other things. Uh, so then there's a third reason, you know, because CO2 is an effect, a side effect of what we do. It's not the cause of all what we do. The cause is our consumption of resources. And just to show you here, uh, left top, you see the fresh water per capita in the world. It's still declining. We are now at 5,900, but it's going down. This is biodiversity going down. This is uh, land per capita going down, and this is the uh, uh, saturation of ores uh, going down all over the world. So, you know, uh, it's not, uh, CO2 is not our only problem, it's the most pressing at the moment. Uh, to have a closer look at the materials, if, if the ore grades decrease, you know, uh, they will not get lost. The world will not lose materials, but they get diluted. And so if the ore grades uh, 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 decrease, then the energy goes exponentially up to get the same amount of resources uh, back. So uh, 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 copper mines were once 20% saturated with copper. Now it's up to a half percent. If it goes to 0.25%, uh, it's four times the energy we need to, to, to harvest the same amount of copper. So we can invest a lot in smart technology and using a lot of copper, but you know, uh, um, we face uh, our real problem is the materials, not the energy. Um, and just to give you a small example that everybody will understand, you may have a laundry dryer, and now what, what today we think, now, you know, we, we're going to lease one. We're not going to buy one. Owning is old. We're going to lease one. Or you say, well, we produce it in a circular way from uh, scrap steel or something. So we're doing a good job, you know, we're sustainable circular economy and things. But you still have a laundry dryer. And what you have to do then, because fossil fuels is impossible, we have to build wind turbines to run these laundry dryers. So uh, 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 every laundry dryer requires wind energy. Or are we going just to put the clothes on the line again and let the wind do directly the work? Yeah? This is the choices we have to face. Yeah? Um, and I made a little calculation. For laundry dryers in the Netherlands, we need 620 windmills, land-based 2, 2 megawatt windmills. 620 only to run the laundry dryers. And some other things, all electric doorbells requires 46 windmills. And it's all materials that has to be produced with the energy again, et cetera, et cetera. So um, uh, um, conclusions, you know, making zero energy refurbishment, yes. 
but seek for the optimal balance of resources, of measures, between renewable energy production and reducing the demand, and start with reducing demand, of course, and behavior. Use materials with very low impact, uh, reduce demand by addressing uh, the use of the house or building and behavior. And I was, uh, 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 the, your minister this morning uh, said also uh, that we should change behavior, change our living styles, and compact living. And I was very happy hearing him say that. It's not very often that politicians address behavior, but that's where we have to aim for. Um, and, of course, uh, low-tech solutions. Uh, so instead of the full makeover on the left top, you know, we have to go more or less to a concept like this, a summer winter house, where we only insulate and heat a small area of the house for the period that it freezes outside. In the Netherlands, it's maybe two weeks uh, that we have uh, uh, freezing temperatures outside, so why should we pack the house as if it freezes 365 days a year? That's complete nonsense, in my view. Um, so, um, and I had a little exercise in behavior and, and, and uh, energy reduction by demand and behavior with the University in Maastricht. Um, they invited me and, and, uh, and we said, okay, let's start with re reduction instead of production first. And this is a few things that we could think of, you know, flex temperature concept, the corridors uh, 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 said we can be unheated, you know, flex space competent, lecture plans in day blocks and heated only part of the day so that you don't need to heat the whole building 24 hours because you have a mess uh, of organization in your lectures. Um, so, uh, flex time concept in winter working from 12 to 8 in the evening so that the sun can heat up the building in the morning. And in summer, we, we work from 7 to 3 in the afternoon so that, you know, we can go home when it gets too hot. Um, and also, um, we propose to have a, a holiday in January and February instead of July and August for the academic year. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So we have to become very creative in how we live and organize our built environment. And then there is one other thing we found out: the whole carbon budget that we, is left is needed to retrofit the buildings and houses that we have. That means that every new building, you know, is not allowed to increase our problem. Yeah, it should should not be allowed to increase the CO2 emissions. That means, in fact, that it has to meet the building regulations that will be applicable in 2050, when we are supposed to be at net zero CO2 levels. Yeah, it was quite, uh, you know, I was quiet as well when we discovered that this, in fact, should be <laughs> that way. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, uh, every new building that adds CO2 increases our problem instead of helping us out. Um, well, and, and even the IPCC, did, this was last week on a conference, uh, to meet the one and a half degree climate targets, every building should be at least zero energy, have the materials, uh, um, use materials that store CO2 and phase out concrete and steel in production, and she forgot to say aluminium, because that's, that has 10 times more impact than steel even. And we don't need it in construction, of course, uh, aluminium, not at all. Um, um, and so this was the, the uh, vice chair of work group three that stated this in this conference. Um, and we, it can be completely different. Maybe you know this building in Bregenz in Austria. It has no heating equipment and no ventilation equipment. It's, it's functioning completely on the internal load of people and computers and coffee machines and is designed such that over the whole year, the, the indoor temperature is between 22 and 26 degrees. Has no equipment at all, saves a lot of uh, uh, metals and materials. Uh, invest a little bit more materials, of course, and the, the, the walls are a bit thicker. But, you know, I don't say this is the solution, but we have to think out of the mind to get in that direction. And these tools, LEED, BREAM, and all the others, they won't help you because they pack CO2 and energy into 100 categories of uh, measures that should be taken. If we want to reduce CO2, measure CO2, and optimize for CO2. Because all our prosperity we enjoy today is based exclusively on fossil fuels, which we want to phase out, and that means that we have really to make drastic measures. Uh, um, uh, we're having a little party, uh, the past 100 years, and maybe 
another 10, 20 years with fossil fuels around the year 2000. But before we live from solar energy and afterwards we will have to live from solar energy, the future is in our past to learn from. Um, and, and materials are what we have to address mainly there. Um, there is much more to tell. Uh, this book is just out last week. I, uh, uh, there, I have a few copies with me um, to read for you. Um, and I hope uh, it helps the discussion also for Ireland to see how best to uh, go forward in this discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Rovers. We might take a seat and have a, a quick conversation, if that is okay with you. Um, unfortunately, time is always going to be too short. Uh, but that is, uh, I mean, there, there was so much to take in there and, and, and an awful lot of detail. Should we be considering the, the whole point of retrofitting if that's actually going to negate our carbon footprint? In any way, the complete house makeover retrofitting style that we should, should reconsider. Yeah, it might be an option in some cases, but in most cases not. I think the first thing you should do if you want to uh, 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 improve in your housing situation is to see where you can reduce demand without uh, technologies. Eh? Uh, 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 how, your lifestyle, how you use the rooms, mm. etc. Mm -hmm. You know, first look at your kitchen and, and dining room. Eh? Uh, Maybe, you know, during winter when it's a few weeks cold, you just retract in those rooms and don't use the other ones and don't heat them. Yeah. Switch off the heating for the rest of the house. Okay. You know, uh, it's a few weeks of uh, uh, living there. And apparently, I think even socially, it ca can be very uh, interesting to, mm -hmm. to, to be back on the same table again instead of, you know, uh, interneting or twittering uh, in, in different rooms. <laughs> yeah. So again, it comes back to the behavioral changes that we need to make in our own space, in our own lives, in our, living in our style. own homes. Yes, yes. How about on a grander scale, if we were to think about building new homes, and again, we'll go back, you know, the, we, there's a lot of talk about that in Ireland at the minute. When we're building new homes, what do you think are the key things that we really need to keep in mind? So obviously materials are at the core of that, but should we be also thinking about you know, making sure that those houses are up to a certain standard in terms of keeping heat in, all of those kinds of things, or is that an archaic consideration? Well, it, it is the problem, and it, it's a bit of a dilemma, I agree, I mean, but, but, but if uh, a new building adds to our CO2 problem, I mean, it doesn't help much, of course. So we should make sure that our, uh, in total, not one building, but in total, what we do in the building sector in the country, that it does not add to our problem. And so in, in the Netherlands, I already proposed to, to politicians, you know, we should have a, a policy that we reduce living space. I mean, everybody in the Netherlands has about 60 square meters now available. Well, it should go down to 35 meters a person. Mm -hmm. And then no new construction is needed because we have a lot of empty space then. You know, so if you do something with tax measures there, you can machine avoid that you have to build a lot of new construction. Okay. Yeah, um, and, and, uh, and like in my case, uh, my children left my house. So, you know, the, the whole second floor is in, in fact free. I, I don't use that anymore. So I should move to a smaller house so that a big family can come in my house or I should rent out the second floor, mm -hmm. you know, and prevent having another apartment to be built. You know, and this, of course, you can't directly enforce, but with, with, with tax measures and subsidies, et cetera, you can, of course, stimulate that this trend starts uh, uh, beginning. Mm. I have a couple of questions in that are based on uh, the Netherlands, and I'll, and I'll bundle them in together if, if you don't mind. Mm. Uh, one person's asked, what's the predominant fuel source for home heating and hot water in the Netherlands? And that might actually relate back to, there was a previous question on Slido asking if Ireland should look at, I think it was like an un, under ground heating system um, on, a, on a larger scale, not just home by home. So perhaps that, that, that links in there. Um, another person asks an interesting question. If we're going to have to evacuate coastal cities that are going to be underwater, should we bother retrofitting houses that will probably be underwater in a couple of years' time anyway? So that's another yeah. existential question. Um, <laughs> well, I already suggest... And, and, and a bigger question. Um, for climates where artificial cooling is needed, because air conditioning in other countries, I mean, it takes up so much energy. Uh, what strategies would you su suggest for that rather than thinking about the countries where it's going to be really cool? 
well, if we talk about cooling in Ireland or Netherlands, we should just forbid it, you know, uh, at least in housing. Uh, and and uh, we can do without. I mean, it was where I live this summer, it was 40 degrees. First time in history in the Netherlands, 40 degrees. Uh, and by passive measures, you know, uh, keeping the sun out, things like that, night cooling, I could keep it to 27 in my house, uh, which was pretty good living. I mean, it's warm, but uh, not, not uh, uncomfortable warm. Mm -hmm. So that you can do that. Uh, you can buy a cool uh, air conditioning, of course, but it's not needed. You should stimulate, you know, passive measures. Uh, yeah, we are below sea level. At least uh, where I live, I'm 20 meters above sea level. Um, with a reason. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. <laughs> you weren't going to buy a house just yes. anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, half of the country is below sea level. And I think it's a taboo in the government to address that issue because uh, if they're wise, they would not invest there anymore. Uh, but the, soon, the moment you say that, of course, mm. the whole market collapses and, and the economy is a, is a mess. Mm. Uh, so I, I think that's a dilemma how to address these issues. Uh, mm. But there are some market parties already addressing these issues and moving out uh, silently without letting uh, 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 publish about it. But it's already starting, so it's not very wise. But well, I suppose they won't give up, and then we'll have to see how we handle that. Uh, yeah. um, I, uh, unfortunately, we don't have a huge amount of time, and so I wanted to ask you more about yeah. you know, the modular design and, and yeah. how you can retrofit a home like that in such a short space of time. And, and I guess, why aren't we building like that in Ireland? It seems that we go about that building process in a very, very different way to what you do in the continent. Um, so perhaps it's... Well, sharing. the majority is still doing the large makeovers eh, in Holland, and, and there's many programs and subsidies to do this. So, uh, and I, I was part of the, 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 the people that started it as well. But, you know, continuing a, a research showed that this is not the right direction to go. So I changed my mind. So they don't like me now anymore because, you know, <laughs> you, know you said in the beginning we should do it. I said, yeah, but you know, <laughs> this is how it is. So the majority is still thinking about these large makeovers, not about, you know, the, re the reduced space heating. But, okay, we'll see how it goes. Great. Well very, okay. very interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Rovers. Um, I think lots of again.